Hey everyone, welcome back to iHeart Animation. So one of the biggest things that I wanted to do with this relaunch of my channel was to bring on more guests. I've thought since the very first time I filmed a video with Sarah that the two of us having a conversation really brought out the best in both of us and made the video so much better than it would have been if it was just me alone. So with this new focus on animation, I've planned to bring on several new people that I've gotten to know over the years of writing for the Rotoscopers and becoming a part of the online community that has grown up around that site. To kick off this new chapter, I've invited my friend Mark Brown of the website The Animation Commendation to join me. He also writes for the Rotoscopers and he's brought me onto his channel a couple of times to play a version of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire that he's created themed around animation. We always have fun discussions, so I thought he'd be a great one to bring on as my first guest. So with this new format, I'm always looking for new animation that I've never seen before. So I've been having my guests choose something for us to watch, and Mark has chosen the 1970 film, The Phantom Tollbooth. I'd never seen this before, so I was really excited to watch it and talk with him about it. You're recording now, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Ibrahim, aka Mark Brown, and I'm very excited to be on the Jonathan North on his channel. I'm a big fan of uh, his, especially like his Alice in Wonderland videos and all that. And now that it's I Heart Animation, I, I love it even more. We know we know each other first from Rotoscopers, an animation website that we both uh, contribute to. And we've been uh, internet friends ever since then. And uh, I personally am a big animation fan. And I host two blogs and the Animation Accommodation where I post like animated movie reviews and I do animation projects like my, my Who Wants to Be a Millionaire Animation Edition games. I have a My Live Action Disney project where I'm intending to watch and review every single live action Disney movie, theatrically released Disney movie ever made. So if you're interested in those, please check them out. I'm planning on eventually looking at some live action ones too. So maybe I'll have to have you back when I get to some of those. <laughs> oh, sure, sure. That'd be awesome. <laughs> so you chose the Phantom Toll Booth to talk about today. <laughs> So yes. why don't you talk about why you picked that and just why you like that movie and why you wanted to talk about it. So The Phantom Toll Booth was a book written by Norman Juster in, I don't know, maybe the 60s or 70s. And it was a book that I had read when I was younger and I liked it a lot. It was, it was very Alice in Wonderland-ish, but with also more themes. It's basically about a boy named Milo who finds a phantom toll booth in his bedroom that takes him on a journey to this to multiple i don't know worlds where interesting things happen like there's a kingdom where the king thinks the words are better than numbers there's a kingdom where the king thinks numbers are better than words there's there's a lot of wordplay and a lot of puns and it's it's just an interesting enjoyable ride and then i saw this film um a few years ago and i never i don't i don't love it amazingly but i do think it's there's a lot of good and merit meritable qualities in it and I, I just think it's a fun movie to talk about so that's why I suggested it for us to, to do this. Had, had you seen the movie or read the book before? I I am like 95% sure that I read the book as a kid okay. but we also had a different book that had excerpts from a lot of famous kids books so yes. I don't know if I am remembering that book or if I actually read the whole thing. Oh, okay. The main thing that I remembered was the character of Faintly Macabre. And I, I remember that because I always thought that her name was Faintly Macabre <laughs> until I heard someone say the word macabre out loud. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> so that's how, that's the main thing that I remember about the book. Watching the movie through today, I, I was not really remembering a whole lot. I remember the dodecahedron. Oh, but yeah. that one, I know for sure that was part of the excerpt that was in that book because I remember the illustration that went along with it. Uh, I see. So basically the dodecahedron and faintly macabre are both the only two things that I remembered from the book. So this was kind of new to me in that I didn't remember the book much and I'd never seen this movie. I hadn't even heard of the movie <laughs> before you suggested it. Nice. It, it was really interesting. <laughs> I it's wouldn't say that I loved it, exactly. but I did like aspects of it. Mm -hmm. it. Yeah, that's the best way to describe this movie, I think. The thing that I liked most about it was the fact that it was Chuck Jones doing yeah. this. 
And I didn't know that he'd ever done a full length animated film. I know that there were like package features with like Bugs Bunny cartoons, but as far as like an original story, I, I don't think I even knew that he'd done that. Apparently there may be a couple others, maybe shorter, but longer than the cartoons. I'm going to have to look into those for, for future episodes. Maybe. Yeah, same. But yeah, but, yeah. seeing the Chuck Jun animation, that, that was something. I think it fit the world perfectly. It fit the world that the Phantom Toll Booth takes place in. I think if it had been any more cartoony, it would have been weird. And if it had been any more realistic, it would have been weird as well. Yeah, I I kind of want a realistic version. Not that, not that <laughs> I want this to replace this, but because like, yeah. I love the fact that there's so many different versions of Alice in Wonderland. I like seeing different people say oh, yeah, yeah. So I would like to see somebody do like a realistic <laughs> take on this. Lord just of the to Rings-esque see, version. <laughs> yeah, just to see how weird it could get because that's the one, that's one thing that I really liked about it was just how weird it was. I like, I like weird things. I like Alice in Wonderland a lot. Yeah. And this reminded me a lot of Alice in Wonderland. One thing I didn't care too much was how on the nose like, the allegories were, basically telling you what it was talking about. So that was, I, I, I wish it had been like a little more subtle. But other than that, it was fine because Alice in Wonderland does that. It's just, it's more obscure with that one. Like you have to read read about the book to find out what the book was talking about exactly. that, that's one thing that i really like about alice in wonderland is all the hidden messages and meanings to things and this one yeah. it didn't really try and hide anything <laughs> it was like very on the nose the entire time that's that's probably true yeah I, I do love the weirdness of this and i do like weird things like like how like you do but i i, I didn't mind how on the nose the allegories were i i just, I just felt it, it fit the it fit the the point of the the book as yeah. well yeah, the, it wasn't the like it's pretty on the nose too, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it wasn't a like a terrible detractor, but I'm just comparing it to Alice in Wonderland. Like everything exactly. was a lot more subtle, and I enjoyed that. And I kind of wish that it were that way, but it's it's fine. It worked for the story, and it wasn't like a terribly bad thing. It was just I don't know preference, I guess. I think one thing we should mention too is that uh, the movie is mostly animated, but there's a there's a few live action sequence in the beginning mm-hmm. and at the end i liked how they did that it was sort of a wizard of oz-esque vibe to it instead of turning color though it turned animation <laughs> <laughs> i love the scene when he's driving the car through the toll booth and like half of him is animated and half is live mm-hmm. action and it goes back and forth <laughs> yeah i thought they did good with that they got creative with it mm-hmm. instead of just having the whole thing be animated i like that they started live action and then went to animation one thing I was going to ask you, did you, what do you think about the songs? Um, they were fine, but they seemed like a very much a product of their time. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think the songs would be written in the same way these days. It just, it, I don't know. It felt like it, they dated the movie, which is fine. The whole, the whole movie like felt like a product of their time. So I guess the songs aren't necessarily a bad thing. It just, I feel like it contributed more to the datedness of the movie. But oh, okay. most most things in the movie dated it. The animation style dated it. The voice yeah. actors dated it. The yeah. the, so the way the characters Dawes dressed. Butler. Yeah, everything. Oh. It's fine. A whole bunch of Dawes Butler and Hans Conrad in that movie. <laughs> I I noticed like one of the thing that like it's Chuck Jones, of course. So mm. it felt very much like a lengthened Looney Tunes cartoon. Mm. So that wasn't like the only thing, like the voice actors also made it feel like that because there was a lot of Mel Blanc in this movie. I was picking him out all over. There were so yeah. many characters voiced by Mel Blanc, like the dodecahedron yeah. specifically. I was like, did they bring Bugs Bunny into this? Because <laughs> the dodecahedron sounded exactly like Bugs Bunny. Yeah. I think Officer Short Shrift, I think he was Mel Blanc as well, if I remember correctly. There was so many Mel Blanc characters in yeah. this. June Foray was in there a couple times too. Yes, yes. I think June Foray was also the voice of the the boy that Milo talks to on the phone before and after yeah. the mini series. Yeah, the boy, the boy that got left hanging Ralph. on the phone. <laughs> he just left the phone off the hook and went off to, dis- to explore this strange <laughs> land. Thankfully, it was sort of like a time travel thing where he came back only five minutes later. But still, he left the kid on, on, the, on the phone while he just decided to leave this world. 
It's kind of like <laughs> Narnia when they go inside the wardrobe and then come back like decades later and it's only been like five minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I personally, I like I like a lot of the songs. Not all of them, but there are some that I find um, I find them catchy and fun to sing. I especially love the last the last one, hence forth and forth with. Like I, I sing that to myself all the time. <laughs> <laughs> like the song in the beginning when they're talking about Milo, um, it reminded me a lot of that song "Cheer Up Charlie" from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Like I just that was I was kind of getting a Willy Wonka vibe from the beginning <laughs> and end of the movie, but like I'm I think it came out around the same time, so that's probably yeah. why. Just the quality of the color and the sound. Yeah, very Willy Wonka esque in the live action sequences. Yeah. <laughs> Willy Wonka meets Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> that's that's probably a good way of putting it. <laughs> I, th- I thought this was a very apt movie for me to review since I've been reviewing so many Alice in Wonderland adaptations. It, yeah. it felt like a natural continuation of that. <laughs> a spin off or something nice. Yeah, something like that. I, I know that they've been having plans to remake the film, and I, this is an example of a film I think. I would like to see a remake of another animated adaptation of this. I think, like you said, it's so so weird, and especially now with with how we are in CG animation and whatnot, I could just imagine how weirder it can get. And maybe they can bring mm-hmm. in characters from the book that weren't in this film adaptation. Because from what I remember, I think the author Norman Chester he did not like uh, how the film ended out. That's ended what the wiki be, page said. So maybe, yeah, yeah, that's that's why I saw. That, I think that's where I found it from. <laughs> so I um, maybe if the remake could do some of more to, I guess what you would like. I think he's still alive, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he is. I looked him up. Yeah, <laughs> so maybe he could be involved with that. But yeah, I don't know. What, mm-hmm. what do you think about a Tim Burton um direct, directing? Ooh, <laughs> I would love that actually. That <laughs> I like Tim Burton. Yeah, I didn't even think about him for this, but yeah, I, like, that would I be cool. See, I can see that being so weird, like weirdly enjoyable. <laughs> yeah, it would. I mean, it probably won't happen. I know he's so busy with so many other things, but oh, yeah, true. I like that idea a lot. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. like the idea of a remake. I think this is one that could definitely benefit from that. Like I said, it's not because I don't like this version, but I like no. I like multiple versions of this, of all different stories, so... As I'm not one who's anti-remake just because I want something new. I like seeing what other people do with the story that's already been told, putting their own spin on it. I think this is perfect for that. Yeah, I agree. Well, I think that's about all I've got to say about it. Um, I guess, um, where can people find you if they want to f- look into more of your stuff? Well, you can check out my blogs. The animation Commendation is at markb4.wordpress.com. My live action Disney project is my live action Disney project dot wordpress dot com. Oh, if you have Twitter, you can also check me out at the underscore anim underscore com. It's short for the animation combination. Yeah, and I was just a guest on his YouTube channel where we played an animation themed "Who Wants to Be a Millionaire" game. So I'll have a link to that episode below as well. Yes, please check it out if you're interested. You can also find it on my animation combination blog as well. Okay. Well, thanks for coming on, and I'll have to have you back. I'm sure there's lots of other movies that we can talk about. Yeah, no problem. I, I, I'm so excited to come back. If you if you'd have me back, I would definitely come back. <laughs> well, I'll see you then. Bye. Take care. Bye. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching this video. I've got a lot more episodes planned, but next week I'm going to be by myself again looking at a Japanese film about a little sheep from the makers of Hello Kitty called Cheerin's Bell. And it is significantly darker than Hello Kitty ever gets. So we'll see you then. Bye. Uh...